Well, we like, knew we knew we wanted like because there was an overarching story of like this is where society is, and, but mm-hmm. there's there's hope that you can like we can come out better if we change some stuff. Yeah, and um, so we wanted that like those story beats to be told in a certain way. Yeah. Okay, never mind. You were doing something. Yeah. This. Hello? Nope. You know, the very first one, the, the prologue, um, I'll let you talk about that a little bit more because you kind of scripted that whole thing out, didn't you? Like, uh, Yeah, I mean, so prologue and epilogue really fall into each other. So prologue obviously starts the album and it leads into devices, which is about um, the, the abuse of, of electronics and how it affects how we, you know, um, decisions we make. Well, decisions we make, how we socialize, and even how these how we interact with politicians and things. Too. Well, <laughs> you know? how these corporations can like control what you want by like like pushed like or um, mm-hmm. suggested advertising. Yeah, and then um, with the the intermission, it was the one exception I think. The intermission. Um, it kind of, we kind of we didn't intend for it to, to be this. It, it was it was really a tie-in or a lead-in to uh, the song "The Anchor." It's meant to literally just sort of represent like the most hopeless point, I guess, um, so that we can actually come full circle and actually get to a point where we realize that there is hope beyond that. You know that that's not the end. That's just you know somewhere in the middle of the journey. Uh, I think it's too big. Yeah. I like how low that is right there. It's not the actual drum beat, it's just a beat. Yeah. It's just a feel. Yeah. The real drum. And then uh, epilogue is the ending of the story where, you know, you've heard everything we had to say about like what's wrong with the world and then it's leading into Lux which is you know like we're here's the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. um, we always knew that we wanted to to end the album with this um, sort of sense of hope for the future <laughs> Like he said, I mean, all this negative stuff that you've heard us talk about, all the problems, um, they're all overcomable. Like, we can move past them. Um, musically, I think we, I, like, we're, I, I, I know if, like, I am, like, really into it, and I think everybody else is, like, big into orchestral music. Yes. And this was the excuse to do it. <laughs> it was. It this was, was perfect. These, these were to be like I love movie scores and how like there's there's plateaus and there's drops and then there's, they come back and there's these big moments. Yeah, you know the vibes that you can build with orchestral Hans instruments. Hans Zimmer and, and oh yeah, uh, Hans Zimmer, Clint Mansell, mm-hmm. um, uh, 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 Danny Elfman. I was gonna say Danny Elfman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Henry Jackman. Um, I, I knew the vibe we wanted. I knew where the baseline was. But you're literally building it from scratch. And you're building it from nothing. Uh, Which was different for us because, yes. I mean, you know, when you're writing a song, yeah, you're building that from nothing too. But you sort of know the components. You, you, you sort of know what you're you know building. Your, with. You know your uh, parameters going in the studio. Yeah. You don't just go in making mouth sounds and, like, oh, here we play on the guitar and then we'll. Yeah, you know, let's find some it. good chords and then let's make an entire orchestral sound. Arrangement out of it. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very, um, and, and you know, my hat goes off to, to Keith and Rob on those three because like, um, I had my handful of, um, of suggestions and my handful of little additions and layers and things, but like the majority, the bulk of that writing uh, was Keith and Rob. Like, and they just, they just nailed it. Like every time I heard one, I was just like, oh my God, that is so awesome. <laughs>